It turns out, the final room is a large Roman-style coliseum. There's dirt on the ground and all the column seats are filled up with stuffed animals. Krampus Jr. walks out into the middle and throws out his hands. He goes, yeah, the crowds go wild for the final confrontation. Krampus Jr., what exactly is the final confrontation? Coliseum battle. Col- Coliseum battle? We've been through all these tests of morality and the final test is a, a fight? Yeah, just like the gladiators. That's going to be so cool. Okay, so here's the deal. You get to pick a weapon of choice and then I'll summon that weapon for you. And then I'm going to fight you with my sleigh bell. He holds up a sleigh bell that's the size of a mace and looks about as heavy as one, too. It jingles as it waggles. But what does this prove about my goodness? Well, Paul, a brave man would be able to fight even a child. Oh, well, my weapon doesn't work on the pure of heart. So if you're pure of heart, then you should be fine. Well, how pure are we talking exactly? Uh, I think you have to be a virgin, for one. Have you ever laid with the opposite what? gender? But... That that seems like hardly a fair standard. Well, if you're married and you have a wife, then it is acceptable. Okay, listen. Morals have changed. Things have moved forward. And Grandpa then... Senior comes up behind you. He's flapping his hands and he goes, blah, 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 blah. Morals have changed. We have our own standards. Listen, we wrote the rules way back when. You mortals were fine with some of these back then. I checked. Get on with it. Wait, you consulted with humans about whether or not this would be okay? Yeah, yeah, thousands of years ago, I checked to make sure that all of this was fine. So these standards, they're not even, they're not even like a higher standard. This is something that someone else passed judgment on. What, One what of if- your peers, yes. Weren't you all bent out of shape about that with the jury trial earlier? Well, contemporary peers would be appreciated. They are contemporary by about like, I don't know, a couple of thousand years. It's fine. Krampus Jr. goes, choose your weapon. Okay, well, I would like... Beer. What? Beer. I want a beer. Okay. Krampus Jr. snaps his fingers. You get a beer, Jeffrey Dahmer. Pop it open and drink it immediately. Oh, thank God. What? Just a beer? That's not a weapon. Oh, shoot. Actually, is it too late to ask for a six-pack? What's a six-pack? Uh, like six beers. Well, you only get one weapon. Okay, I want a keg. Like a keg of beer? Actually, make it a barrel. Okay. He snaps his fingers and your beer turns into a barrel of beer. Actually, how far can I go with this? A water tower? Are you gonna use a water tower as a weapon? A water tower full of beer? Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, okay. He snaps his fingers and a water tower appears in the center of the arena and it is presumably full of beer. Okay, I'm set. Can we call timeouts or is this like it? Um, I didn't think about timeouts in the rules. I, I don't, I don't think so. Okay, you guys hold him down. I'm gonna go do my thing. Go over to the tap, wherever that is, and just turn on the beer. Well, I suppose if you expect you're going to lose, there's worse ways to spend your last moment. Okay, I want a carabiner. Standard issue German rifle. Is that a kind of vegetable? No, I just said it's a standard issue German rifle. Right, and what is a rifle? What, do you, what is a rifle? It's, it's a weapon that you shoot people with. A gun, you know, a firearm. Okay. Uh, could you describe in more detail? Do not know what a gun is. Do not know what a rifle is. Um, I didn't really watch all the human history before I went out. All right, well, it's like a tube which you load uh, tiny pieces of metal into, and there's spherules on the inside, so the bullet spins. Okay, I think you're going to have to draw me a picture. All right, I will take a stick for now. My weapon of choice will be a stick, and I will use it to draw you a picture of a gun. Oh, okay, all right, that's fine for now. He snaps his fingers, and then you get a stick. All right, well, it's good that I studied to be an artist for a while. Hold on just a second. Weren't you rejected from art school? Shut up, I still know how to draw a gun. I can do basic shapes, okay? But everyone thinks you have to be Leonardo da Vinci to be an artist. I'm perfectly fine, isn't it? What about you, Mr. Paul? Could I ask for, like, armor that makes me invulnerable to your weapon? Um, I'm gonna say that's against the rules now. Well, was it against the rules before? I didn't think of it, so it wasn't in the rules, but now it's in the rules. So you're just changing the rules as the fight goes on. How do I know you're going to honor the duel? Because it's gonna be a really good duel, so I'm, I'm just changing the rules now before we start. All right, so you promise no rule changes after we start fighting. I promise absolutely no rule changes in the middle of the fight. Okay, well, is Hitler's drawing what a gun looks like? Could could I ask for something maybe more ambitious, like a, a tank or... Don't ask for a tank. And why not? It's not as though I know how to fly an attack helicopter. Do you know how to drive a tank? Oh. No, I suppose I don't. Well, if you don't have a tank crew, then a tank is useless to you. Don't ask for a tank. Dahmer, you were in the army. Do you know how to drive a tank? Uh, no, dude, and I wasn't in the army for that long. All right, well, 
Uh, forget the tank thing then. Oh, I know. How about a technical? Okay, what's a technical? Well, you know when we were in New York and you saw all those vehicles on the street? Are those technicals? I didn't really look very close at them. I was more looking at the very tall buildings and that lady up on the billboards that was drinking the water, the brown water. You mean the soda. The soda water? Well, all right, right, yes. Do you remember the vehicles? They were like metal carriages. Right, yes, exactly. Well, a technical is one of those, but with a flatbed in the back, like a, a, a t- it's a truck. Okay, you're going to need to be more specific. Right, well, um, okay, so imagine a chariot, right? There's like a space in the back for someone to ride. Okay, got it. He snaps his hands and he makes you a chariot. Uh, you know what? Sure, this is workable. And, and then in the front um, is like a device which causes the chariot to drive on its own. Okay, like a, like a horse? He snaps and then there's a horse pulling the chariot. Kind of, but like a small horse that has more power than a regular horse and it's enclosed within a safe space. Well, then how does the horse see? Well, the horse doesn't need to see. It just follows directions from the driver. Oh, like blinders on the ray. Okay, I get it. I get it. He snaps and the horse is enclosed in like an armored casing and is smaller. Well, I guess that'll do. This horse, he's like stronger than a normal horse, right? Well, how much stronger? Uh, well, we say that engines have horsepower. So like, I think a truck engine would have something like 300, 300 horsepower? I'm not sure exactly the specs on vehicles. The horse has to be as strong as 300 horses? Something like that, yes. Boy, that is a very strong pony. Well, it's it's not really a pony. I mean, the horse is technically, like, it's driven by fire. And the horse is on fire? Sort of. It's, it's a combustion that thing. That is so cool! He snaps and the horse, like, bursts into flames, so there's smoke coming out from the bottom. Okay, also close enough. And then finally on the back, there's, well, there's there's guns. Usually very big guns, like the one Hitler here is drawing. Okay, I think I am done. This is what the carabiner looks like. Are you sure you're drawing it right? That looks like just a tube. But, uh, yes, of course, it's just a tube, fundamentally. But look, there's all kinds of parts. Oh, I have to draw the parts in the middle. Do you actually know the inner workings of a gun, Hitler? I mean, could you fire something that you drew? I don't know. How much time do we have to get it right? Krampus Sr., who sat himself down in one of the seats, yells out, Personally, my patience is running a little thin. But I don't know, Paul, if you have a better, faster way of explaining how firearms work to a child. All right, Krampus Jr., are you familiar with crossbows? Oh yeah, I know crossbows. All right, so imagine a crossbow, but it fires its bolts, oh, at the speed of sound. Okay. Yes, in fact, that's going to travel so fast that as the bolt flies loose, it's going to make a thunderous crack as it breaks the sound barrier. Wow. Right. That must take forever to wind up. Oh, no, no, that's that's the beauty of it. It's powered by fire, like the horse. Okay, so the crossbow is on fire. How do you hold it? Well, the fire is actually, it's on the back end of the bolt, so to speak, and um, kind of like the the fire detaches from the bolt, in a way. Uh, I don't really get uh, it. Never mind the fire. Like, like let's suppose, uh, okay, you know how like a volcano, when it explodes, it's all full of pressure? Right? That's actually what's going to shoot the bolt. Volcanic pressure shoots the bolt? Yes, in essence, that is what a firearm's all about. You see Hitler, he's drawn this this tube. There's like volcanic pressure in the back end of the tube, and it fires the bolt out of the front end of the tube. How does it get that much pressure in it? Well, we put like a tiny volcano in the back end. We put it in the back end of the bolt, to be specific. So there's a tiny volcano in the back end of every bolt, and they shoot the bolt so fast that they crack like thunder. Yes, can you do that? I can definitely try. He snaps his fingers, and a crossbow appears mounted on the back of your chariot. Okay, do you mind if I test this? Yeah, I want to see it go. All right. Climb up on the back of the chariot, and I guess pull the trigger. The crossbow erupts. The bolt flies off, crack, and then buries itself into one of the teddy bears in the stands. (laughs) Krampus Jr. goes, oh my god, that was so cool. Right, okay, so here's the beauty of it. Now I want you to imagine an entire belt of these crossbow bolts, and they're all fed into the crossbow one at a time, and you don't have to reload it. Okay, how does that work? Well, uh, suppose you have like a, a clockwork crank, right? And you're, you're turning the crank, and every time a new bolt goes in, then, it, then it'll fire. So you just, you just roll that crank until you're out of crossbow bolts. Okay, all right, I got it. He snaps, and now there's a crank on the back of the crossbow and a bolt of crossbow bolts attached to that. Okay, this will work. Oh, actually, hold on. I've got a phone. I think I can just show you a technical. That might clarify this somewhat. Krampus Sr. comes storming down. He goes, no, 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 no. He snatches the phone away. He says, do not show my son the internet. All right? He will not see the internet until I'm ready to see the internet. In fact, he cracks your phone in half. Oh, 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 that, 
That was mine. You won't need it when you go in the bag. None of this is going to help you defeat my son in combat. The Slay Mace is undefeatable. All right, get him, son. And he stalks his way back to the stands. However, Krampus Jr. is leaning over your crossbow thing, and he's just, like, looking at it in awe. He goes, this is so cool. Do do you think you want to... Do you want to trade? Trade? Yeah, I'll give you the sleigh bell if you let me drive the chariot. Uh... Yes. Okay, okay, here you go. And he hands you the sleigh bell. Uh, thank you. How do, how do I use this? Okay, so it's basically a mace. You just hit me with it and I will explode. So am I to presume that you're not pure at heart? Uh... Who, me? Oh, uh, no, I stole a cookie once. You look over at Krampus Sr., and he has buried his head in his hands. Krampus Jr. hops up on the chariot. He goes, oh boy, oh boy. He grabs the reins, and he whips him. Yeah! The chariot takes off at high speed. Ah! Oh my god, it's so fast! He tries to make a turn, and then the chariot topples over and rolls down the way. Dust kicks up behind him, and then when it clears, you see the Krampus Jr. is trapped underneath the mangled chariot. Ah, yeah. Oh my god. I, I think I'm stuck. I I'm stuck. He struggles to get loose, but it doesn't look like he's gonna. Well, I guess Hitler wins again. Another victory for Germany. Come along, Paul. Let's go squash the child. Y you, you go ahead, Hitler. I'll catch up with you. That's fine. I will claim the victory. Go over and sit down next to the Krampus. Well, there it is. First mortal in thousands of years to escape punishment, and of course it had to be you, Sprinkle Winker. Finally admitting there might be a flaw in your whole design. Oh, no, no. I'm saying... There's no point in my entire career. Mortals have finally figured out how to best all of my, all of my tests. And you know what? It's just downhill from now on for all of you. Well, I hesitate to say your entire body of work is useless, but what exactly do you think you contributed? Justice, Sprinkle Winker. How many times do I have to tell you? And, and in front of my own child. He's going to look back on this day and he's going to realize this is when he's going to understand that his dad is a farce. I don't know about that. I mean, your son is clearly invested. He obviously looks up to you. He was excited to make all these trials. I bet he'll want to do another one. Why would he? When he sees what you do to the world, he's going to realize how grave this mistake was. Do you have any idea how disheartening it is to watch you people do what you do? Well, of course. I mean, we all have to live in the consequences, don't we? You know, you don't get to them before they've run their course. That's the thing, though. They always run their course, don't they? Hitler shot himself in a bunker... Mr. Sprinklewinker, maybe he'll die before his legacy bankrupts him, but eventually he'll lose power because you, you can't be like him forever. It causes poverty and hardship and distress. And you know where the prosperity of the upper class comes from? It comes from the lower classes who are suffering. If you crush the people beneath you, that erodes the foundation of your power. Sprinklewinker is doomed eventually just by nature. Everything he built will crumble. After all, that is the crux of evil, isn't it? It eats itself. Oh, boo-hoo. So you punish yourselves, you sniveling idiots. I don't need to step in and punish you. What, should I just let Hitler go? Let Jeffrey Dahmer go? I'm not excusing any of history's great villains, or even myself. And I'm not Mr. Sprinklewinker. I just know that we all have our own flaws and demons to battle. The only point I'm trying to make is that somewhere during the course of things, there has to be a correction. It could come at the end of the lifespan, or sometime before. That there is a punishment isn't crucial, just that it gets better. Hitler is standing over Krampus Jr. with a stick, hitting him. Whack, ow, whack, ow, whack, ow. He's not dying. Paul, I think you need to use the mace. Krampus, I don't want to kill your child. Not for you, because I don't really like you, but for the sake of your child, he seems... Well, he's a child. Ah, oh, he'll be fine. You can hit him with the mace. I mean, I don't even like the idea. Why would I want to hit your child with a mace? He chose the Colosseum battle to be the final trial. Okay, he he chose this. Just hit him with the mace. Well, what if I don't? Then that's a forfeit, and you'll go in the bag. Let's be honest here. If I crush your child with a mace, are you really going to let me go? Obviously, someone who would crush a child with a mace to get out of being punished is not someone who's... No, no, you will go in the bag because that would still make you a horrible person. Well, there we are. So it's a catch-22. If I forfeit, I go in the bag. If I kill your child with a mace, then you'll put me in the bag because I'm a child killer. Well, actually, he'll be fine. He won't really die. He'll, he'll recover, but I'll still be mad at you. You know what I think the problem is here, Krampus? It's that you're a powerful individual who can't admit that he's wrong. Because I'm not wrong.
No, it's because if you admit that you're wrong about me, then you'd have to reevaluate everything that you've done so far and acknowledge there might be other cases that were unfairly prosecuted. Well, if you want to unprosecute them, then be my guest. Why don't we start with Hitler? You can tell me all the reasons why he's just a poor misunderstood little butterfly who needs to be protected from the Krampus. You know what? No. No, you know what I think we have, Krampus? I think we have a situation where you want to be the moral authority, and yet your only options are amoral. Either let me go, which you believe to be morally wrong, or put me in the bag even though I won the trials, which you also know to be morally wrong. So I propose this. You admit that there is still some development to do in your methods. Tell your child that things are not perfect, and that it's up to him to reflect on this and amend the methods of the Krampus for the future. And in return, I will agree we won't return me to Earth. However, maybe I can be your personal butler or something. Mr. Sprinklewinker, the personal butler of the Krampus. You will be surprised at what a good butler I am, considering you don't think I am one. Oh my god. Well, what is it? Compromise yourself and your morals and look like a hypocrite in front of your child, or make some kind of deal? You mortals, you think that just because you have the audacity... Well, I'm in no hurry. I'm not really eager to run up and hit your child with a mace. But how much time do you want to spend watching Adolf Hitler whack him with a stick? <sighs> Hitler, could you please stop hitting my child with that stick? No! You people all belong in the bag. Imagine me cleaning your toilets. Won't that be fun? Oh, my God. I, I suppose, I suppose... You can make it terrible, I guarantee you. you. You won't be a worse boss than Mr. Sprinklewinger. I don't know if I could find the energy to be as terrible of a boss as him. Oh, I know. He uses computers to make it worse. They, they reevaluate your misery, like, every week, and then tighten the screws a little. Maybe that's what I need to do. I need to be doing this with AI. I need to modernize. No, 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 no. no. It, the, the child is no, the future. No, computers. I need to get on. I need to contact Mark Zuckerberg. No, listen. I am not going to forfeit. You have to invest in your child, okay? In, in that. The, the whole reform and emotional well-being. If you go to computers, I'm not surrendering. <sighs> Fine. All right. I agree. Henceforward, Paul Sprinklewinker, you will be my eternal butler. And, in return, I will agree to place my trust in my child to reform the ways of the Krampus as he sees fit. Fine. I don't really know how much else to reform this situation, and uh, I don't know if it will do any good, but I have done my best. So, let's agree. Well, there it is. He holds out his hand. I suppose I shake it. Boy, if you could get another book deal, I bet you'd write all about this. I would not even know where to begin, but yes, it would make a fine book. Krampus stands up. He goes, Junior, Paul has made a plea deal. He's admitted he's guilty. Krampus Jr. goes, oh, does that mean I won? Krampus waves his hands and the chariot lifts up off his son. He says, yes, yes, you, you won. However, I do have to say that in light of all this, and thanks to you, I've realized that not everything that I have done is perfect, and... Uh, you've got a lot of really great innovative ideas, and I, I think that you should reflect on this and think about how you would want to do more trials going forward in the future. In fact, maybe I'll let you do more of the trials from now on. And then he looks at you, Paul. I guess not. Uh, yes, I, that's sort of what we agreed on. And I'm doing something a little different with Paul. From now on, he's going to be our house butler. So if you need him to clean anything or pick up any broken glass or anything, you just you just get him. Krampus Jr. goes, oh, okay. At your service. Well, what about me? What about Hitler? Oh, yeah, okay. He grabs you and he puts you back in the bag. Oh, wait, no, no, but I've, I've, I, no, ah! Okay, and Dahmer too. He picks up Dahmer and he puts him back in the bag. All right, it was nice meeting you, Paul. Bye. Yes, we didn't interact very much. So, Paul. Henceforward, for the next eternity, you are the butler of the Krampus, who is cranky and terrible and kind of a tyrant of a boss, but he doesn't use computers to make your life worse, and is therefore slightly better to work for than your old boss. That's kind of like purgatory, I guess. Uh, you could do worse. You could do worse. Krampus Jr. sort of takes over the business as much as Krampus will allow. Uh, it turns out he still kind of wants to micromanage a lot. So, the reforms are not, like, really wild or fantastic, but you did achieve a little bit of something. And that's it. That's the game. Yay, mediocre ending. I uh, see in these moral games, you've always got to go either all evil or all good. You, you rode the line too much, Paul. Was there a plan for Paul to actually, like, get off the hook or anything? Uh, no. I, I didn't really know how that was going to end. Well, it was fun, though. I feel like Lowry kind of didn't get to do a lot. Yeah, I didn't really know where to go. I mean, best case, I was going to drug you and kill you and eat you. And and again, that sort of like ends the game. Yeah. Hitler had some potential, though. That just like 
angry man. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities to be an angry man. It's a strong driving core. So who's doing the next game? I've got one. I want to do Charlie Chonkless Chocolate Factory. All of you guys are going to be corporate spies trying to break into the magical Charlie Chonkless Chocolate Factory to steal their secrets. Okay, that sounds cool. Oh yeah, I got that. I'm down with that. All right, great. Then that'll be next time. Get excited. I hope you guys liked that episode. If you did, consider supporting on Patreon. You can find me under Don Somewhere. I also have a website called donsomewhere.com where you can find all the stuff that I've done over the years. Well, not all the stuff, but a bunch of the things that I've done over the years since being on the internet. Sometimes I do actually get a little ahead of schedule, and when I do, I post early stuff on the Patreon. We also have a Discord server. You don't have to be on the Patreon to get into that, but it's there. You can send me a message if you want a link. Again, that is Don Somewhere on Patreon or DonSomewhere.com for our website. Hope you guys have a wonderful week.